Hi and welcome to AF Tutorial. My name is Arnold and I would like to show you a brief tutorial. I just installed 3D Studio Max 2018 and I would like to show you what kind of changes or adjustments to the user interface I do in the beginning in order to make the program uh, properly configured for architectural visualization. So right, I'm starting with um, maximizing the, uh, the program and the first thing that I'm, gonna, I'm going for is, as I'm mostly working in classrooms on, on uh, projections, on beamers, I'm going to switch to a light version, because the light version can much better be seen on, um, on projections. So I'm going for to customize, and I'm going into the customize, custom UI and defaults switcher, and I'm going for a max version, that is the old um, setup, the old settings, which doesn't use real-world texture coordina coordinates and some other things um, together with a light user interface that is, can be much better seen. This setting needs a restart of the program, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video and then I'm going to continue. And we are back with after the restart and we're gonna do some additional changes to the user interface first the uh, scene Explorer is something that I only need in uh, in rare cases so I'm gonna undock it here and close it the next thing is I'm going to get rid of for right now rid of the ribbon which is up here there's a button that allows you to turn on and off the ribbon as we want to use as much of the user interface as possible I'm also going to uh, close the space where the scene explorer was the next thing is on the right side I want to see most of the uh, parameters that have that the, uh, the, 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 the different object types have so I'm going to use two of those columns you extend it till you have uh, two of those columns so it allows you to see much more of the parameters. One other thing is the view cube. The view cube is something that uh, allows you to navigate in the scene, to pan your scene, to uh, to orbit it and so on. Something that can all be done with usually the middle and the right mouse key and some keyboard shortcuts. So I'm gonna get rid of the view cube simply by holding my mouse on it, do a right mouse click and choose configure. With configure you can just and click show the view cube and the view cube is gone if you want it back here under views view cube you can anytime get it back the next thing is um, we need to customize our units so if I go to customize unit setup I can define in what unit I'm working important I usually leave the display unit scale to generic, that means I don't have any numbers or letters at the end, so it's generic units, just uh, just numbers, and the system units is what I want to change, and I'm going to change the system units to meters, I'm used to work in meters, uh, meters, centimeters is quite common in, in Europe to work in architectural visualization, if you prefer in, uh, inches or feet, that's fine with me, just make sure you have the right unit set, I'm going for meters, and I'm going to close the unit setup. The next thing is under customize, I am usually going into preferences and change one important thing, and that is the scene selection. It, auto, it comes under general uh, scene selection, and you need to turn on auto window crossing by direction. That means, and if I say OK, that means if I select certain object from left to right, it's going to be a window that only selects everything inside the window. When I select from left, from right to left, I'm going to have a crossing window that selects everything that is also crossed by the window. So something that should be turned on by default, you have to go to customize to do that first. There's only a few things left that I want to do. The next thing is, um, I'm going to turn on the angle snap, something that you can easily later on do with a keyboard shortcut A, but I want to have it 
turned on by default, that means whenever I have objects in my scene, like here, and I want to rotate them, those objects rotate in five degree steps. So I can easily rotate them 90 degrees without uh, typing in something and so on. So it's much speeding up a lot of the rotation process in my scene. Okay, so that was the most basic settings. Uh, there's of course some more settings when it comes to animation and something that I usually also turn off is the background grid here in my viewport. So I just go to one of the active viewport, the yellow one, and I type G as in grid and the same for all the viewports so I don't have to, uh, that I don't see the grid in my background. One other thing is when you want to orbit your scene, that means a rotation um, of the viewport, you're orbiting around an object. There is a couple of uh, settings on the all the way in the bottom, the second uh, button from the third, second button from the right is orbit. And when you hold your mouse on it a little bit, there is three or four different orbit settings. And I'm going to choose the third one that is called orbit sub object. That means when you ever have different objects selected, it's always orbiting or rotating around the selected one or even partly selected when you are in poly mode or in face mode and so on. So um, to get rid of the circle, do a right click and you're ready to start your work in 3ds Max. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Um, if you like it, uh, leave some comments. Uh, hit, don't forget to hit the subscribe button or the thumbs up. Thanks for your time and see you in one of the next tutorials.